Okay, so we're gonna talk about this kit generically first, and then we're gonna install it on a Mahindra 2555. If you're interested in sticking around for that, that'll come second. Hey guys, don't let this intimidate you. I'm gonna show you kind of basically how this works. I'm not an expert, but I've learned a few things. Um, this kit's from WR Long, came in a nice box, kind of like that. Um, some paperwork on the valve, also some instructions there. And essentially all this does is allow you to take pressure off one of your, in this case, it's the loader valve. I'm gonna show you how that works in just a minute. Um, but you're taking pressure off the loader valve. There's an extra port on the loader valve. Um, and we're gonna tap into that, use that hydraulic pressure to drive another hydraulic cylinder on the front of the tractor, which will allow me to tilt my snowplow left and right. Okay, it's third function. There's other names for it, but basically this is a third function kit. And so basically all this is, is two hoses that allows hydraulic pressure to come to the valve and then the return line to the tank, okay? So this is a, this is a hydraulic valve here. It's electrically activated. Of course, it has solenoids on it. And so the pressure comes in one side here and goes out the other side here on those little ports right there, okay? Um, now, the work comes when you hit a button on your electric switch right here, which is also tied into this, and activates one of these solenoids. It allows pressure to flow through out this valve here or out this valve here, depending on which button you push. And I don't know which one is which. I'm going to have to figure that out. But basically, these are quick connectors. It allows you, if you're going to take your loader off, to take this part off also, because this will be attached to your loader. And then um, it allows you to quick disconnect or quick reconnect it. So that's kind of nice. Pressure then goes out. If you hit one button, it comes down one line and goes out to this quick coupler. And whatever you have connected to it, it's gonna drive. Now this didn't come with the kit. This is actually the hydraulic cylinder that's off of, that came with my snow plow. And so the pressure is gonna go on one side of the cylinder and drive the piston either that way, or if you hit the other button on the switch up there, it's gonna send pressure down the other leg and it'll come down this other hose that's connected and then put pressure on the opposite side of the piston and push the piston that direction, which will make the cylinder shorter, right? Okay, so this is real simple. There's, there's nothing complicated about this at all. Okay, so some of the nomenclature is easy to understand once you understand what the letters mean. So again, there's four connections here for hydraulic lines, two on the bottom here and two on the other side here. Now these screw inside, this is gonna be, it's actually labeled pretty well here. There's a T right there and that stands for tank. So this is the line that goes back to the tank or your supply tank, your hydraulic fluid, okay? This side has a little P there and there's a P and so this is the pressure line. So this is where the high pressure comes in right here. And this line is what you connect to your power beyond port. Now I'll explain the power beyond port out there at the tractor. It's a little bit easier to see if you can see it on an actual machine. And as far as the parts go, This is just the two button handle. So this will replace the knob on my loader uh, control. And that'll give you, you know, two different directions that you can move your third function. And that just bolts on, slides on the top and then bolts on so it stays nice and secure. It does need a power supply. I'm gonna try to find a place that is key on condition only and not always on. So that this isn't always powered, but once I turn the key on, it'll get power. And then of course that's power in, this is power out. That actually goes to the loader valve, has a quick connect right there that goes to this quick connect right here. Okay, so that's pretty easy. The only other part is what they call a bulkhead plate mount. And so this is just a steel plate with some holes in it that allows us to bolt it onto the front of the loader. And this is custom made for my tractor and um, just has some threaded on fittings there that we can, and so these will be threaded on permanently. And then of course I'll be able to connect my hydraulic cylinder to these with quick connects. And so it has nice caps that they came with, which is kind of nice. That covers up everything, keeps, the, keeps them nice and clean. So when it's time to use them, they're not full of crud. And the only other things are these hoses. And there's some short hoses that connect the loader valve to the new valve, the third function valve. And then some long hoses that go all the way up to the front of the tractor, um, right at the front of your loader so that you can connect your front uh, function to it. This kit also comes with a fuse uh, block, it's inline fuse some electrical connectors, which I probably won't use. I'll probably solder all my connections and then a few zip ties.
Okay, so this is just kind of an easy diagram that kind of shows you how this works. It's very simple as you can see. Now, the loader valve in this case, and in some tractors, it's mounted right be below your control. And so your control, your, your actual loader valve is right there and all your hoses connect right there and you can see all that right there. Uh, my tractor has a cab, so this is all actually mounted in a different place outside the cab. So obviously my control is inside the cab, but it has some lines that connect to this loader valve outside the cab. We'll look at that in a minute. But basically, here's the pump. This is where your pressure comes in from your hydraulic pump. Very high pressure, right? Comes in here. And then um, depending on your loader control position here, the valve will send pressure down one of these four ports, which will, you know, one will curl your bucket, one will dump your bucket, one will raise your loader, one will lower your loader, whichever it is. And so that all goes to the front end loader like that says. If you go into bypass or what they call pressure relief here, that means let's say you're curling your bucket, but if you ever notice when you curl your bucket, you can hear the pump and the sounds the engine's making and everything, and then you hit the limit of the hydraulic cylinder and it stops, like the, it can't curl anymore, but you still have your lever pushed over in the curl function. It kind of makes a different pitch, and so this pressure relief valve opens and allows that high pressure to flow back to the tank, okay? So that's the tank part of this loader valve. Now, here's the important one. We're worried about the pressure beyond. And so this is just straight pressure that goes to the, or power beyond, power beyond valve. And so this will come out here. We'll connect this hydraulic hose that goes from this port to our third function valve. That's that one right there. Okay. And so that'll come into the P port right there, like we looked at. And so that T port, all we're doing now is bringing this back and taking this back to the tank. And this is real simple. And then obviously our function here, when we hit our switch on our knob, is gonna allow pressure to flow out to one side of the hydraulic cylinder or to the other side of the hydraulic cylinder, depending on which button we push. Okay, and on this tractor here, you can see the loader control is right there. It goes back over here and mounts inside the cab there, against sort of inside the fender right there, back by the seat. And so it's not, uh, you see a lot of loader controls are mounted up here and then the valves will be right over here. So this um, is just the control right here. Those controls come through right here and then activate this loader valve. So this is my loader valve right here on the side. So this is underneath the cab, um, sort of above the frame uh, to the side of the frame as well. And right underneath here is the hydraulic pump. So here's my hydraulic pump right back here. That's my hydraulic pump right there. And so here's the high pressure line that runs right along here. And that pressure comes in here and right here there's a p and it says p and that's for power and so that or pressure maybe but anyway that's where the hydraulic pressure comes in this one right here is labeled t there's a little t right there and this is tank so this is where for this loader valve this goes back to the tank right there and goes back to the transmission now so that's in that's out now here's the four ports that go to the loader one two three four those are the four ports that go to the loader and control the loader. And here's the loader controls. There's four hoses that go up here, they go up here, and of course they go along there. They turn into uh, solid lines and places where they can. And then that controls all the loader hydraulic cylinders up there. And then that only leaves one other port because there's seven ports. So we have one, two, three, four right there. The power in, the power out, or the pressure in, pressure out. And that only leaves one other one, and that's this one here on the bottom. And so this one here on the bottom is the power beyond port. We've crawled underneath here. Here's the loader valve right here. Here's my power beyond port. Um, it's not, this one's not labeled and I can't find a label on it of any kind, but sometimes they'll be labeled PB or something else or BY for bypass maybe. And then, or they'll have a color code of a green sticker or something or green paint. This one doesn't have any of that, but basically this is where we're gonna tie into for our third function valve. So first things first, we mount this with the quick connects facing forward. And I'm not gonna tighten this down yet. Looks like we need the longer bolts, don't we? Okay, these bolts aren't gonna come out. None of them are. So there's two Allen bolts here. We're gonna pop those out and uh, get this plate off and get these uh, bolts exchanged for the longer ones. Longer bolts. So we're back underneath the loader valve now. Here's the loader valve, okay? 
and this is the power beyond port right here that comes out and goes this way and this hose that comes over here just goes back to the tank okay so I didn't make this probably didn't make this clear uh, so what we're gonna do is this is gonna be pressure that just comes through here and goes back to the tank it just kind of circulates through there what we're gonna do is disconnect this hose right here and then we're gonna connect this is pressure right and so this is gonna be supplying the pressure side of our th third function valve and then the hose that comes off the tank part of our third function valve is just going to connect to this hose right here so we're just basically splitting this and this apart connecting a hose to this going to the valve connecting the other hose that comes from the valve back to this so we're just kind of creating a loop um, and through the valve okay so let's take this off here it's probably going to dump fluid all over me and so now this becomes the pressure side and this becomes the tank side there probably won't be much coming out of the loader valve but out of this there will all right let's see if we can get this screwed on here pretty quick Okay, so all we really did was we just split this Power Beyond hose. And so here's the elbow for the Power Beyond hose. We took, here's the other end of the Power Beyond hose right here, this black one right here, this is existing. And so what we do is split that. We put a new hose here onto the elbow and ran that around and it loops around back there. And then it comes right here and goes to the P port right there. Okay, and then now the other line is just another new hose right here that comes around and goes from the T port, the tank port, and goes back and connects to the existing hose. Okay, simple as that. Okay, this does look like a mess, but all we're doing here is finding a hot wire that goes to the fuse box that's only hot when the key is on. Okay, and that's not real hard to do. So my fuse box is here underneath the steering wheel, and um, it just had a couple bolts holding it on, so I just pulled those out so I could get to the back of the fuse box. Now, Looking at the back of this fuse box, let's look closely here. There's three big red wires that come in, and there's a big red wire right there. There's one right there, it might be kind of hard to see. And there's another one right there at the top that has a white line on the bottom of it. It's right there under my thumb. So there's three of them. Now, if you put the test light on them, or the uh, multimeter rather, because I'm not using the test light, I'm using the multimeter, that's 12 volts uh, key on or key off, it doesn't matter. That's always hot right there. So that's powering these fuses on the left side here. Um, they're always powered, okay? But this one right here, this big wire right here, that red one right there, and then this big red one right here are only key on. So I just uh, found a ground there on the bolt, put my grounding lead there and uh, plugged it in. And so this one right here doesn't show any power when the key is off. When I turn the key on, it goes up to 11.6 volts. And then when I start the tractor, it goes up to 12.5 volts. So um, um, that's a good one right there. So that's probably the one I'll use just cause it's a little closer. So I'm gonna take my multimeter red probe and put it where this big red wire is, right on that bus right there that it touches. And uh, you'll see that it reads nothing. Okay. Then we'll turn the key on here, one click. And you can see it's already reading 11.5 volts. <laughs> it's not hooking up the hydraulics or splicing the wires. It's like running the wires and trying to figure out where to run them. So I ended up cutting a little notch out of that plastic right there to run the wire loom because I wanted to run the wire loom over all my wire to protect it. And so I did that. The two wires that run from the control knob right here, where the buttons are, where the switches are, um, goes down here. There's two wires and they drop down through here and they drop down through the floorboard. I had to cut a little notch in the metal on the floorboard to get it through. Um, and then of course, packed wire loom around it and made it nice and uh, wrapped a bunch of electrical tape, or uh, actually Gorilla tape, because this is a little thicker, a uh, bunch of Gorilla tape around it um, to keep it from chafing. So there's Gorilla tape, you know, two or three layers of that. There's wire loom, and then there's the wires inside with their own uh, sheathing. So that should be protected for lots of years. And so it goes down underneath. Um, and it, I just kind of zip tied it to some of the cables here, or some of the existing cables here, and had it come up here. There was some extra wire, so I just kind of wrapped it around and then brought it down here, right here, and then clipped it. That's the connection right there that connects the uh, valve body. And then the other wire I teed out of the loom right up here 
and you can't see it, well, it's actually right here. So here's the main loom with both wires coming in here. Um, I teed it out right here and put it in quarter inch wire loom. This is all three eighths, but I put it in quarter inch and of course uh, passed that up through here. And because my fuse box is right here underneath the steering wheel, it was pretty easy to get to. Just took this panel off. I used a uh, coat hanger there. There's my coat hanger and kind of fished it down until I had my coat hanger pop out and then routed it where I wanted it. Um, taped my wire in the wire loom already, the single wire, and then just pulled it back up through here. And so that made it real easy. Then just spliced it into that one wire that we sh I showed you earlier in the fuse box. And so my actual fuse is right there. So if I do have to replace this fuse uh, in this line for the third function, then I'll basically just have to pop this off with these two screws here, or these two bolts, and then I can get to my fuse. It's right back there. Okay, so that was pretty easy. So here you can see it's very abrupt and both directions it's just very abrupt and it slams both ways. And so I put a call into WR Long and they actually answered their phone and I was impressed with that and the guy was super helpful. I told him what was going on and I asked him if the WR Long third function valve had a way to restrict hydraulic flow and he said no they don't build that into them but I could put a restrictor in line and he said that would work just as good. And he suggested an adjustable restrictor. And so that's what I ended up buying here. But he also said that the reason it's happening is because the hydraulic cylinder volume on this particular snowplow is pretty small. And if I had a regular sized hydraulic cylinder, it probably wouldn't be that noticeable. And if I had two hydraulic cylinders, it wouldn't be hardly noticeable at all. So I went to my local hydraulic shop and they've done some work for me in the past. The only valve they had was this one that I have in line here that you see, and it was a hundred bucks. And that just seems like a lot of money, but uh, it seems to be working well. Why exactly it seems to be faster going one direction and slower going the other direction is there must be more flow through the hydraulic hose that doesn't have the restrictor in it. So it wants to push that side quicker just because there's more flow. Um, the pressure is the same, but the flow is much higher that direction. So, I mean, do I put two restrictors in for 200 bucks? No, I think I'll just dial it down to where I get a happy medium. You know, it moves faster one way, but slower the other way, and I'll just make that work. Well guys, it's so nice to not have to get out of the cab to adjust the angle of my snowplow. And hey, if you found value in this video, please give it a like. And also, I always enjoy reading your comments. So if you would have done something differently or better, please give me some feedback below. And as always, when I make follow-up videos on the snowplow or third function, I'll put links at the end of this video. Alrighty then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.